Welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at lowering. Lowering is a really great technique to learn because it can allow you to get your ropes down to the bottom of a climb or down to the next pitch to continue on your way off a climb if it's really windy. You can give one end to someone to tie into, hand them the other end, and then both ends are sure to get to the next anchor. So that's a really good use of lowering. Another good reason to know lowering is if you happen to be on the second pitch, the anchors of the second pitch, and you're descending to the ground with a single rope. Normally, you'd need to do two rappels from there to reach the ground by folding that rope in half, but you can use the entire rope length when you lower someone. So that means one person can get to the ground, start organizing backpacks, get comfortable, get off of these hanging stations where you would have otherwise had to repel, and then the last person staying at the anchor can do those two repels. And of course, the final reason to learn how to lower is because sometimes people don't know how to repel. They might be scared of repelling or they could be injured. So it's an essential component of self-rescue. So let's take a look at two different ways to lower your partner. Okay, let's take a look at one of these lowers. So this particular lower requires very minimal equipment. It's most commonly used in an alpine environment and usually for short lowers. When I say short lower, what does that mean? Uh, less than 50 feet, you know, usually more like 15 to 30 feet. And the reason is because I'm gonna use a munter hitch and munter hitch, especially when you're lowering, tends to kink the rope up. But nonetheless, it's really great to learn because it is very fast to set up. You can belay someone in on the munter hitch and then you can simply let the munter hitch flip and you've got them ready for a lower. Okay, so I have my anchor set up. I'm attached to the shelf above in this particular quad. I'm gonna set my munter hitch on the shelf that's below. Next, I'm gonna grab the end of the rope that is attached to my climber that's coming into the anchor station that I'm going to lower, okay? And you can load this up on the plate, or excuse me, on your carabiner in two different ways. You can do the air munter. You can take a look at my other videos for how to do that. The nice thing about doing the air munter is that loads this up already in the lowering position so the hitch doesn't flip. By avoiding the hitch flipping, you reduce the amount of twists you put in the rope. So I can do the air munter and pop that in. I can also do the pretensioned muncher, munter, which is also in my munter video, where there's a little bit of twist. I pull until I get the tension I want, and then I pop that in. Either works great. But anyway, you get a munter hitch into the system will be fine, even if it pops over, it adds a little extra twist. And anytime you're lowering, you wanna make sure to back up your system in case there's a twist in your rope that causes you to lose control of the brake strand, you get hit with rock fall, any number of reasons, especially in an alpine environment or a canyon environment where you have steep walls around you that might not be solid rock. So I'm gonna grab my friction hitch, pop my friction hitch on there, Give that one, two, three good wraps with this friction hitch, which is pretty supple. Okay, slide that up, test, make sure it's gonna bite. Looks like it's gonna bite. And I have my rope very neatly stacked, which is really important when you're lowering, that you've stacked it so that your partner's end, just coming down through my friction hitch, is on top. If it's mixed up, then you can give a really awkward jerky lower, and if you're really unlucky, you can end up dealing with clumps of rope right up near your friction hitch that can jam the whole system. So make sure everything's gonna pay out well. My partner could clip in there with one locker for a short lower, two lockers for a long lower, or a tri-action locker for a long lower as well. Obviously, you could also have them tie into the system, which would be even more common, and then away they go, straight down the cliff. Okay, this next way of lowering is generally my preferred way of lowering if I'm at a multi-pitch belay station that I'm managing from the top. So first, this is important with all lowers. I make sure that my rope is stacked nice and neatly so that my climbing partner who's coming in, her rope is on top, her end is on top, okay? So my rope is stacked nice and neatly. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna load my belay plate on my master point. Here I'm gonna use the lower shelf of my quad anchor. Okay, so clip it and flip it. You can take a look at my locking carabiners video 
to see how to handle carabiners, but in this case, I'm going to clip my carabiner into the anchor, flip it over so that the gate is facing out away from the rocket toward me. And now I'm going to orient my bobelet plate so that the direction that my climber is coming in from is on the side of the plate where the climber is supposed to attach. So this area here, which has these friction ridges, is the brake side. So I'm going to face that away from where my climber is coming in from. Okay. And I'm going to leave that open because the rope hasn't been loaded yet. Load the rope in there. Just like so. And then lock it down. Okay. So locked. And just looks like that. This is not <laughs> ready to lower yet. Because in this orientation, there's no friction. My hand would just get sucked into the device. I would let go and then my partner would fall to his or her certain doom. Okay, so instead we're going to redirect this brake strand. So the plate on this side, you can see where those ridges are. I take another locking carabiner that's roughly equal to the size of the locking carabiner that I'm using to attach the belay device to the anchor. Clip right alongside on the side of the plate that has those ridges. Clip that in. Lock that down. And now you can see I've redirected the brake strand. So if I were to flip this device over like this, you can see that that looks very similar to the way you would do a top rope belay. So it's providing braking action the same way you do when you're lowering someone on a top rope. It's just the device is inverted. Now, unless I'm doing very short lowers, almost always just in an alpine environment, I'll always back up my lower. There are a lot of reasons for that, but one of the big reasons is because rock fall could come, avalanches could come, ice fall could come, any number of things, and it only takes a quick second to back up my lower. So I'm going to use a friction hitch tied into my belay loop here and wrap that up. I usually like two to four wraps depending on the diameter of rope that I'm using and I'll give that a tug and make sure it's going to lock up. Okay, so that would lock up. So at this point, my partner could be clipped into that carabiner. It's a long lower. I may want two locking carabiners opposite and opposed or a triple action locking carabiner. Or obviously, I can simply have them tie in. And now under load, my friction hitch is going to hold the brake strand in place so they can't go anywhere. And then as I release the load, or the friction hitch, it's hard to pull with that much force on my own arm, slowly they'll go down. And provided I've stacked my rope neatly, then this should flake off and go right up and through the device and it should be a nice smooth lower all the way to the ground.